Hello everyone. Welcome to VBA for everyone. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Let's look at today's agenda. We will recap. Oh, I'm on your. We will recap about loops for next. Then uh, how to replace the chair variable and how to play with dynamic range with the cell command and do the activity. So in the last lecture, we talked about loops. In programming, loops are used to repeat a single command multiple times. We talked about we can do this in VBA with by use of for and next loop. The word for is followed by a variable and the word next is also followed by a variable. That variable is the name of the loop we are creating. And any command that is in between for and next will be going to be repeated again and again. For then name of the loop that is the variable and after that for example, for my loop is equal to 1 to 10,000. So this means the loop will run from 10, 000, for 10,000 times and minimum value of the loop will be 1 and the maximum value will be 10,000. So every time we run our loop and it touches the next command, the 1 will be added to the value of loop. Then we talked about instead of using the word chair because chair is something which is not present in VBA dictionary, we'll be using some a name that will tell us what it is, what it is going to do. And we will use a small v at start of such name so that you can understand this is a variable. And then we talked about the AND operator and we used AND operator with the with the command range range a1 dot value was replaced by range bracket start in inverted commas a and then we use the AND operator and with the AND operator we use the loop number so what happened when we use the AND operator and loop, loop number? Instead of the value going into one cell, it was repeated throughout the column. With every next loop, the row was changed and first the number appeared in A1, then A2, then A3, then A4, then A5. So we used the, we may, instead of using a fixed range, we made it dynamic with the AND operator. Okay, and at the last, I gave you an activity. The requirement was, instead of generating numbers in one column, it should be diagonal. Row and column should be changed whenever whenever I run the loop and with every next loop the row number and column number will change. So let's go and do this activity. So here I am ready with, with a blank new workbook ready to do the activity. So let's zoom a bit and save this file. This is book one, a brand new workbook. Save as uh, let's say, let me save it at the desktop and new dialog. No. 
loop and because my workbook will be saving a macro I have to change the type so we uh, we have already talked about the type the type would be XLSM the second option which is Excel macro enabled workbook so we will choose the second option and now we will select save now my macro enabled workbook is saved macro will be saved with this workbook let's go to our visual basic here it is our VB window and let's put it here and this one here okay so let's create new macro in a module insert module here, now I'm going to type my new macro so it always start with the word sub and let's give it a name v4 that is variable I can play, put it any name diagonal diagonal loop it should be one word without any spaces bracket start bracket close and enter and VBA all automatically put and sub for us so I gave you a reference a tip that this will be done by using the cell command but before that let's create our loop for variable my loop is equal to 1 to 1000 let's do it for 1000 rows and columns next variable my loop right so this is how we decided that anything in between for our next will be repeated and as soon as I make my cursor leave this row Excel will check for any errors and there are no errors so let's make a space in between for a next so here the command will be repeated so the command was cell 1 comma 1 dot value this is the tip I gave you that this will help you so first thing first how how to change value of a cell to make it to make it move on the left side of is equal sign so cell 1 comma 1 dot value is equal to is equal to what think about it simple it should be equal to my loop number v my loop alright if I move my cursor so you can see the spaces have automatically been added by VB the required spaces in the syntax so what more, more changes we need to make first things first if you have tried this command you must be knowing by now that cell is not a valid VBA function and if you have tried to google it you will find it was not cell it was cells C E W -L, L S so I gave deliberately gave you a wrong function so that you can go and search about it so it would be cells as soon as I enter cells and make my cursor leave and leave the row VBA should have 
popped an arrow but there there is no error so cells 1 comma 1 the first one represents the row number and the second one represents the column number so what we are going to do is I am going to change my row number and column number every time the loop runs and and the variable which is going to change every time a loop runs is variable my loop the name of the loop so if I say cells and if I type this copy cells v v so now my macro is ready to run and get tested okay so let's test our macro f8 f8 right now my loop value is exactly it's empty because still I have to run this line f8 now it's going to run my loop is 1 my loop is 1 and my loop is 1 so in first row first column the value is 1 and then it is next my loop now my loop va loops value is 2 so if I keep running you can see that it is creating a diagonal list let's run it completely it is done with a click of second let's close it let's maximize our view and you can see let's zoom it up from here zoom out zoom out zoom out zoom out zoom out and you can see uh, too much zoom out okay my system is a bit slow to response my commands and you can see that there's lots and lots of rows and we have created a diagonal list so and we cannot see it let's zoom in yeah this is the maximum it can go so let's go and check out manually so 116 and then we have 143 and then we have 205 and so on our list is so simply by using a variable we can change the cell reference the row reference and the column reference and with simple set of by using a single variable we have made our cursor move in a diagonal angle so this was the assignment i hope you would have you have been able to do it with help of google and you have understood the concept of a loop and how to use a variable in cell reference to make it cell reference or uh, with the function cells and with the function range to make it to make the cell reference dynamic now i'm going to talk about cursor movement and the offset function So let's talk about how to make cursor move and what are the commands of cursor movement. Let's start our recording. Let's name it cursor movement. I'm clicking on B2. That's we know and control down arrow control right control up and control left 
so let's stop recording and go and see what has been recorded visual basic modules module 1 and VB has recorded range b2.select we have already seen this command then selection dot excel down dot select selection dot excel to write selection dot excel up selection dot end excel to left so these are the commands which excel has recorded when we made our cursor to move to the end of range with the help of control plus arrow keys so next would be what is recorded when we press the shift button also so when we are doing selection recording on macro 2 shift control down shift control right stop visual basic and now it is range selection comma selection and down selection comma selection and excel to write so it is the same command but now it is within the within another command that is range and with selection so we don't need to understand we don't need to uh, memorize these commands whenever we need these commands we are going to uh, start the recording do the steps and see what has been recorded so next next would be what if I have to select all the cells and all the cells are record, uh, selected when I click on this section of the screen so recording on this is macro 3 ok click here stop recording go to visual basic and the command v is cells dot select when I use the command cells dot select that that is equivalent to control plus a with control plus a all the cells within the worksheet got selected so this is about selection and cursor movement what if I want to move my cursor one step to the right or one step up so if I click use the arrow keys one by one let's start recording this is macro number four macro number four and let's click on B1 and let's click the down arrow key 1 2 3 4 5 stop recording let's go to visual basic and see what has been recorded and it is only one command and that is range b7 dot select what VBA has done is it has recorded your steps and the last target cell has been recorded as in your selection so let's try try it again this is macro 5 once down once right once up once right once up once right once up once left stop recording let's go to visual basic once again and we have this range d5 dot select but I don't want go to D5 directly. I want all the cursor movements. What if I don't know where my cell is? Where is my cursor? Like we use the command active cell, wherever the cursor is, I want my cursor to move from its current place into any direction 
one step up, one step right, one step left, and one step down. So the command that for this movement is offset. Let me explain you how offset works. Remember this grid. In the offset function, we have to give parameters for movement. If you look at this diagram, this is a column and this the red line shows our rows. If I give a positive, sorry, this is otherwise. The red line shows the columns and the blue line shows our rows. If I give a positive row number, my cursor will move downward and if I go give a negative negative row number my cursor will move up likewise if I give positive column number my cursor will move right and if I give a negative column number my cursor will move left so the command was offset what is the syntax of offset let's not reinvent the wheel and go to google and write vba offset and let's go to docs.microsoft.com and here is our help from microsoft website range offset property we don't need this all we need is this is this command active cell dot offset let's copy it and go to our excel where is excel and insert a new module so let's start typing a new macro single movement single movement and let's put a V with this so you can always understand we can use any name and paste our commands so active cell dot offset row offset 3 column offset 3 okay let's put it on the right side and have our Excel here so right now I am in curse I am in cell B5. Okay, I cannot see this, so let me come over here. Okay, so active cell dot offset, row offset 3, column offset 3. I am in B5, where this command should take me. Think about it. Positive row will go to the right side. So I am in row 5, so I will go to 6, 7, 8, row 8. Positive column will take me to the right side, I am in B, it will take me to C, D, E. Let's run this with F8, F8, F8 and here we go, we are in cell E8. If I say I am in E8 row offset 0, column offset minus 2, I am in E8, guess where my cursor will go, F8, 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 0 means no change in the row and the column minus 2 make the cursor move to the left, so with this offset command we can make our cursor move wherever we like and depending on, on some calculations. Remember when we talked about range A1, we changed the 1 and we when we use the function cells bracket within the bracket 1 comma 1, we replaced 1 comma 1 with variables. So what we did was 
we move the cursor we, or we choose chose the cell as per our requirement so we can always use variables in, instead of zeros and twos okay so this is about offset and one other thing we talked about was that we should not be inventing the commands what I did was I went to Google typed VBA space offset and then clicked on the Microsoft help and got this command active cell dot offset row offset is equal to zero column offset is equal to two so instantly I got the command but there is something <laughs> I need to share to find offset command for cursor movement it took me two months to find this function offset so <laughs> so this is the hard work my hard work you are getting just in a instantly and this is the offset function the offset offset function is very powerful function it makes the cursor move and the last thing i am going i want to talk, talk about today is the use of the inverted commas so let's go to our worksheet where it is So here is our new workbook. Let's go to Visual Basic and start typing a new macro. Insert module sub understand. Let's say quotes. Okay, what are my commands? Hmm. Let's say range rather chair. Let me use the variable chair just for clarity. Chair is equal to one, two, three, four, and five, a number, and then I say range a1 dot value is equal to chair and that's it okay we can use spaces line spaces within our VBA code so that we so that the code is easy to read and we can have uh, space within the commands too or we can use a tab unlike other programming languages there is no value of tab in VBA so you can use tab and you can have your commands without tab Pe most of the time people use commands to differentiate between the codes so if I use a tab my code is easy to understand and say and likewise if I use the line spaces my code is e easy to read and easy to understand so what will happen if I run this macro you must have figured it out right now so let's run it macro understanding codes run the value in a1 is 12345 but what will happen if I put quotes around the word chair and now let's go and run our macro boom the word chair appears in cell a1 so you what you need to understand is if someone is in quotes inverted commas VBA will take it as a text and not a variable right so 
it's a string when it when we use quotes or inverted commas and it's a variable when we use the word without quotes or inverted commas so if we run without quotes it will be a variable and instead of variable its value will be stored in the cell and if we use quotes it will be taken as string and the text value will be stored in our cell so this is it i think let's recap what we have discussed today so we talked about cells function and with cells function we used the variable within the loop and then we talked about the cursor movement we recorded the cursor movement with control right arrow left arrow then we recorded uh, our macro while selecting the cell using the shift control and arrow keys and uh, i what i want to do is try page up page down function home function end function control and control home and then try to use the offset function i have just discussed and in the last we uh, discussed use of quotes or inverted commas with the which makes vba to understand a text as text or a variable so this is for all for today thank you till next time bye